All right, so it's come to this, another video about closed box action figures. Well, I wanna do a bit more of an actual industry analysis, kind of what you would actually do in a toy company, looking at open versus closed box figures. Now, when you're selling a figure online, there's no problem selling a closed box. You don't need to have that package that sells off the shelf. But when a toy is at retail, well, a closed box can be very detrimental to a toy, especially when you're dealing with the majority of purchases for any toy product, being kids and, well, more so gift givers, people buying for kids. Now, for collectors, there's a reason we like our toys to be in window boxes. We like to see them. One, because we want to make sure we get a good paint job, but obviously some of us like to display our toys in package or kind of get that nostalgic feeling when you buy a modern toy packaged like a toy you had as a child. It brings back sort of a, not only nostalgia, but a feeling of empowerment, of getting something that you might not have been able to afford or buy or get, which you now can. And yeah, as a collector myself, it makes me kind of sad that the upcoming Indiana Jones figures from Hasbro, which I am excited about, I'm a huge Indiana Jones fan, but they're all going to be in closed boxes. I'm not going to get to display any of them on my wall without making it just look like a poster. And if I wanted a poster, I would just buy a poster. So a lot of folks point out, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Toys used to be in closed box all the time. That was the thing. I mean, back in the 60s and the 70s and even throughout the 1980s, toys came in closed boxes. Well, let's talk about that. One, usually it's play sets and vehicles. Those tend to be what stays in closed boxes simply because of piece count, having to put the product together, assemble it. It requires a closed box. There are examples of action figures being sold in closed boxes and, you know, as recently as the 80s and 90s. But for the most part, once you kind of figure out that toys sell better when you can see them, well, it's basically where this becomes the new gold standard. Parents, gift givers, collectors, kids, we tend to want to see what we're getting when it comes to a toy. That's why so many toy products not only are packaged with window boxes, but with trimies. So what I wanted to do, I was at Target recently, uh, late at night. I was on my way to pick up my daughter from dance at like 9.30. So I had you know, 20 minutes to kill. There was almost no one in the store. So I put together kind of my own end cap. Yes, I fixed it afterwards. Don't worry. But this end cap was basically almost empty. And I decided I would fill it up. And I went aisle by aisle. I went down every single aisle. The girls' aisles, the wheels' aisles, the construction aisles, the blaster aisles. And I looked for toys in closed boxes because I wanted to put them all together on this end cap in order to really understand how they read and what works as a closed box and what doesn't. Again, this is the kind of exercise that would be done at a toy company all the time. Usually there's a conference room dedicated to packaging analysis. I spent my first two years in the toy industry as a copywriter on the Hot Wheels team. So packaging is a huge part of my professional background. You could see how much all of these toys are usually put in what are called open trays so that you can actually feel and have a tactile connection to the toy when purchasing it, not just to see it. So obviously some toys are always in closed boxes. If you go down the Lego aisle, it's pretty rare to see even a small window, such as you might see in a Hot Wheels set where the car is shown in a, a window. The other aisle that usually always goes with closed boxes are games, puzzles. Again, because you're dealing with piece count and there's really not much to show off. Parents, gift givers have come to accept that board games, puzzles, building sets, Lego, anything of that kind of category, construction is, is really the proper name or board games being the names of the aisles. These come in closed boxes you expect because of the piece count. But if it can be shown in an open tray like the Rubik's Cube there, so some exceptions obviously exist throughout the toy aisles, one of them being if you have a blind box, even if it's a large blind box, like the So Surprise line, or if, again, it's a large item like a playset or an activity toy. So this FAO giant piano that goes on the floor, or even the photo booth. These are items that just don't work with any kind of open box simply because of the size of the item and how they have to be packaged. Same thing with anything that's an activity toy or a cooking toy like this, where you're, this is no different than Lego. You just have to be building with Godiva chocolate and graham crackers versus Lego bricks. Another example similar to the photo booth or the floor piano would be this perfectly cute baby uh, crib. Again, you need to assemble this and put it together. What? It's in a closed box. 
But when you go down the regular doll aisle, the action figure aisle, or the wheels aisle, it's really rare, shall we say, to see something that's completely closed in. And that's why I took a bunch of toys, whatever I could find that was in a closed box, and put them together to sort of look at it. And you really can see the overwhelming majority of closed box toys are vehicles, giant-sized things like that giant dinosaur, or games, puzzles, Lego. You just don't see dolls, cars, or action figures sold in a closed box, except for Hasbro's, uh, I guess, attempt to go plastic free. So something like that Dungeons and Dragons figure right in the middle is closed box. But if a parent was going to walk past these, and I've said this in other videos, you really understand how much closed box reads as activity toy, reads as a game. You just don't see closed boxes because again, once toy companies figured out that if you show the toy, you sell a lot more of them. Closing a toy in is basically creating a barrier between the customer and the product. It only works with things like games, card games, puzzles, construction sets. Outside of that, well, we've seen toy companies take a lot of, shall we say, chances at things that might not quite work at market but look good on paper, like that genderless doll concept Mattel did a few years ago that lasted about six months at market. Yeah, there really is no market for genderless dolls that you could swap hair around and make either a male or a female character out of. There, there, if there was a market for this, they'd be at market. There's a reason that this toy line was quickly shoveled off to the clearance aisle. And it was probably not made because kids play this way, but because it was going to make headlines and look politically correct. But political correctness is not the reason to make a toy. You will lose money if you are making a toy trying to make a political statement that action figures, dolls should be genderless. The whole no bubble, plastic free packaging concept, yeah, it makes great headlines, but you are literally hiding the toy from your consumer. You are creating a barrier between the sale and, I guess, walking past it. So while as collectors we have issues because we want to see the figure or display them as a piece of art, yeah, if you really look at everything that is boxed, even if you're looking at vintage toys, box toys just don't read as action figures, dolls, and cars. I hope this video is an interesting deep dive at closed boxes across the industry, not just in the action figure aisle, and kind of what a mistake it is continuing to block figures with packaging and not show what you're buying. Please do share this video with others. It's the best way to support the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.